So today we're going to talk about IBS and IBD. And these are very common conditions, so it's very important to understand what the basic differences are, but also some of the similarities that these two conditions have. IBS, also known as irritable bowel syndrome, is very prevalent in Canada. We have one of the highest rates of IBS in the world. About 5 million people in Canada are affected. This translates to about 1 in 7 people have IBS. IBD, also known as inflammatory bowel disease, encompasses conditions such as colitis and Crohn's. Again, Canada has one of the highest rates in the world of this. About 1 in 150 Canadians are affected with IBD. So some of the differences between them is the disease process and symptoms. There's a lot of similarity with the symptoms, such as cramping and diarrhea. But one of the main differences between IBD and IBS is IBD can have rectal bleeding or it can have blood in the stool. This is not normally present in people with IBS. IBD is also thought of to be an extreme inflammatory condition, have an autoimmune component to it, and there's destruction of the bowel wall. IBS more revolves around a spastic colon and does not involve the same inflammation and once was thought of as not having any inflammation at all, but we've shown there is some inflammatory process that does occur in IBS, which makes them somewhat similar in that respect. IBS is also thought to have a small link with acute bacterial gastroenteritis, which is essentially an acute infection of the gastrointestinal tract. This isn't necessarily shown to be a precipitating factor in IBD. Some of the complications that come with IBD or inflammatory bowel disease are things like fistulae and abscesses. This can be quite common in people with Crohn's and not as common in people with ulcerative colitis, but about 20%, so about one in five, are affected with this. And it's important to understand these complications because if we don't keep our symptoms or work towards remission, these are the things that we leave ourselves at an increased risk for. Some of these other things because of this fistula and abscesses can lead to things like chronic UTIs, obstruction of our bowels, kidney issues, and a lot of these sometimes can need surgery to be able to correct, and the reoccurrence of these things is high if conditions aren't managed. Another significant complication could be perforation, and this is essentially where a hole develops in the wall of the digestive tract. This is frightening because the mortality rate for people with this who suffer from perforation is about 50%. That's about 50% or half of people who have IBD and suffer from perforation may die from this. Another complication is infectious colitis, and this is where there's an infection in the colon. One of the most common culprits of this is C. difficile. Another complication is malignancy. Ulcerative colitis carries a 10 to 30 fold increase in the development of colon cancer. It's recommended that those who have ulcerative colitis go for a colonoscopy starting 10 years after diagnosis and repeat every one to two years after. Crohn's disease does not carry the same risk, but has a higher risk for other cancers. With IBS, some of the complications that can occur with this with unchecked symptoms is an aggravation of hemorrhoids if they are present, malnutrition because of an impaired digestive tract and ability to absorb, but most importantly is the quality of life. Social life can be affected, professional life can be affected as well. On average, someone who suffers from IBS loses about 16 days of work a year compared to someone who does not. And also looking at the psychological factors, about 60% of people who suffer from IBS also suffer from depression or anxiety, significantly higher than healthy people. And it's interesting because depression medications are often prescribed and are being researched for off-label use for IBS treatment.